the city council officially pass its budget this week. Now, the record-breaking $101 billion budget for 2023 is the biggest ever in New York City. The mayor and city council have been criticized for pushing the city's spending to new levels at a time of soaring inflation and concerns about a possible recession. So what will be most impacted by the new budget? We're joined this morning by New York City Controller Brad Lander. Nice to have you back on Good Day New York. Good morning, Rosanna and Bianca. So nice to be here. And thank you for having that amazing young man, Anthony, on this morning. Oh, right I know. Yes. What a great, great story. We need to focus on the positive, but we need <laughs> to know what you think about the new New York City budget. Of course, some watchdog groups are very concerned. They think at a time where we're facing a possible recession, record inflation, that this is a little too high. So there are some important and good investments in this budget, you know, record uh, summer youth employment program, restoration of sanitation cuts. That's the number one thing I heard from people is get the basket service restored. Um, and there is a big commitment to reserves, not as high as we in the Citizens Budget Commission recommended. We recommended $1.8 billion. Citizens Budget Commission recommended 2.5. The mayor and the council put $1.5 billion into long-term reserves. We are going to need that when we have an economic downturn at some point in the future, maybe sooner than we want. So not quite high enough, but a significant commitment. Big thing that I think was a mistake is these cuts to individual school budgets. Right now you've got principals deciding which classes are going to be larger because they have to let teachers go, going from a four teachers on a grade to three maybe for that class of fourth graders that will now have class sizes of 32 instead of 25. We've got federal money to plug that gap. I do think we should have used it. All right, let me ask you something, because, listen, we want our kids to do well, and there are some schools in our system that are doing horribly. But we've had an exodus of kids from the school, over 100,000. You're talking about uh, the city's kids are now at 900. We were over a million in the school system. We don't know why they left. We can guess. Uh, but, you know, we also pay per student the most uh, in the country. So, so is let, there nowhere the to, math. like, trim? Let's do the math right now. Imagine you're a principal and you, got a, you had 100 kids in your third grade. Uh, and so you had four classes. You had 25 kids in each of those classes. You lose five of them. So now you're down to 95. That's a, you know, a meaningful loss, 5%. That's actually a little higher, you know, about the average across the system. And now you get this budget cut and you have to excess a teacher. And so next year's fourth grade, you only got three teachers. And now instead of going down a little to 23 or 24 students, really what those kids need to recover and have those families feel confident, you're going to have three classes with 32 kids on a grade. The whole reason the federal budget, the federal government gave us the stimulus dollars is to help us get through the pandemic with schools that are able to serve all our kids and cutting their school budgets now so that almost every principal has to excess teachers or eliminate the music program. You know, it's penny wise and pound foolish. I, I know. And, you know, listen, we love our teachers and we know you love the teachers because the UFT supported you, right? And gave you dollars. No, no, no. I did not. I did not have the UFT support. I, I'm, you know, they, they supported my opponent. Uh, you could go look it up. They definitely didn't support me. I didn't even make it to the finalist round. Um, this is really about what those families want, what those kids need in that fourth grade class, what the families want, thinking, are they going to stay in that school? Are you more likely to keep your kid in a school with 23 or 24 kids in a class or with 32 with a music program or without with that extra tutoring that your kid needs or without it? Those are the decisions we're making. So there is enough. There was enough to put $1.8 billion in the rainy day fund so that we could survive that recession without big cuts and to keep, not we don't have to increase the budget for schools at this moment, but at least to keep them whole. Uh, Mr. Control, uh, let's talk about the budget for the NYPD, because I know you, there's a lot of people that are saying that this is where they should have made cuts. However, there's also a lot of people saying you needed to spend more here because people want to feel security and safe in the streets. What are your thoughts on, on the budget spending there? 
So the NYPD budget is about flat, but there are a lot of good investments in neighborhood safety. This is one area where I'll praise the budget. You know, having a record high number of kids having summer youth employment program jobs this summer, that is great. There's a, a significant new investment in neighborhood-based gun violence programs. There's more money for outreach to try to uh, help homeless folks off the streets and into housing. You know, uh, I think those are the kinds of investments that we really need to increase right now. Uh, the NYPD budget is about flat. You know, that still means it's high as it's ever been because every year you wind up having to spend a little more than last year just to keep pace with uh, wage increases and inflation. Um, we do need to be investing in neighborhood safety. I mentioned the sanitation investments, which I heard from people from Southeast Queens to Staten Island to the Northeast Bronx. So uh, I think those investments are good. And, and what about the staffing crisis at Rikers? Was money spent wisely there in terms of correction officers? I know like one fifth of them have been out due to being unavailable or sick. What's the situation with that? Yeah, I mean, this is an issue not so much of budget, but of management reform. Those 20% of correction officers who aren't showing up to work on a daily basis, they have to come back to work. If they don't want to come back to work, then they can leave the department and you can hire people to replace them. Uh, what we have there is a management crisis. That's why we've got federal oversight. That's why my office has the Department of Correction on the watch list. I think the council made the right decision not to give them another 500 officers. Uh, they have to clean up the management crisis that they currently have. Can we talk about housing commitment in the budget? Because, um, as you know, there are so many people who uh, don't have a roof over their head. The city owns so much land. Why can't they build something and help house these people properly? Amen. We need to build more. There is more money for housing in this budget, but not enough more. On the campaign trail, you know, the housing advocate said we want to see a $4 billion annual investment, about a doubling of what we're spending on affordable, supportive, and public housing. The mayor committed to it. I committed to it. But this budget doesn't get there. One good bit, a bit of good news about housing, though, is that yesterday, after 50 years, this boondoggle of a tax break for for-profit private developers to build mostly market rate housing called 421A expired. And now we have a once in a generation opportunity for real property tax reform to make it more fair. Right now, homeowners in Southeast Queens or Staten Island or the Bronx pay three times the effective tax rate that my neighbors and I do in Park Slope. That is patently unfair. We can fix what's broken in our unfair property tax system, give some relief to working class and middle income homeowners, and then use our tax breaks in a much more targeted way to build exactly the affordable housing that you are talking about and that so many New Yorkers need. All right. Well, you got your hands full. You got a lot. <laughs> we all do. Of, <laughs> you got a lot of things to look into, uh, including where did the $800 million go for mental health? Is that on your agenda? Uh, it's on everybody's agenda to make sure we're spending mental health dollars wisely. There are some actually some really thoughtful new mental health investments in this budget uh, that we're going to be looking really carefully at. I, you know, I'm more focused on how do we get things going right in the future than what happened in the prior administration. Uh, the Adams administration's added money to this program called Be Heard to try to respond to people in mental health crises. Um, I like that he's going down to Houston to look at what they're doing on homelessness. So we'll keep a sharp eye on where that money is going and make sure it really gets to those who need it. Okay, that's great. City Controller Brad Lander, thank you so much for being on Good Day. Thank you both so much.